Hi, I'm Jeremiah Hersey, and today we're going to be talking about how to create a model-driven application within five minutes. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to use the pre-built or standard tables within inside of Dataverse to create this model-driven application. So here's the scenario. We have a phone distribution center, so they're going to be logging calls as they're calling people, as they're calling accounts. They're going to be logging the conversations of this phone call. So we want to make sure that we can track all of the phone calls that go out, exactly what's going on with inside each phone call. And so, like I said, we're going to create this model-driven app in less than five minutes. So let's jump in and get started. We're going to go to make.powerapps.com. So here we are at make.powerapps.com. And like I said, we're going to create a model-driven app using the pre-built Dataverse tables. So we're going to go to model-driven app from blank. So from the home tab, from make.powerapps.com, we're going to click model-driven app from blank. So it's going to ask us to select a name for this. I'm going to call this my phone call tracking app and click done. Notice that we could put a image in here if we want to, to have a particular image associated with our model driven app. So the awesome part about model driven applications is that they're designated or they're used for data entry. That's the point of a model driven application is for data entry to make it quick and efficient. So the only thing that we have to do inside of our model driven application is to configure the sitemap. So we have to tell it exactly what tables to look at to pull this information. So I'm going to click the pencil icon and this is going to bring me into my sitemap designer. Now when you come into the sitemap designer, you'll notice that there's three pre-populated sections for you. This first section, the new area, this can be considered like your back office. So the general area is the back office. With the group, that could be thought as the departments with inside of your back office. So in this case, our department is going to be the phone, uh, the phone log department. And then additionally, the sub area at the bottom are the categories that make up the department. Okay, so this is going to be the account table. This is going to be our phone call table. So these are the, the tables or the sections that make up the department. All right, so let's rename this a little bit. So I'm going to click on the pencil icon and I'm going to hit the backspace. I'm going to call this my back office. And then for my new group, I'm going to call this my uh, phone logs. So once again, I'm just clicking in it, the pencil and then hitting backspace and typing it in. Now, the main part that we have to be concerned with is the sub area. So I'm going to select the sub area. And then notice on the right hand side, it's going to ask me to select a type. So the type is going to be an entity. So remember that an entity is a table. They're the same thing. So in this case, we're going to choose our two tables. So the first one is going to be my account table. So notice over here, it now says accounts. Now I want a second sub area. So I'm going to go to add at the top sub area. Make sure that you have one of the sub area that you have either the sub area or the group selected or it will not allow you to add a sub area because it's with inside of a group. All right, so with the new sub area, I'm going to once again select an entity. An entity is a table, and this table is going to be my phone call table. Once again, this is pre-built from Dataverse that we're going to take advantage of. Now, let's say that you don't like this name, phone calls. If you want to change it, you can use the title section on the right hand side. So notice down here, 
I have a title section. And so I can call this like phone call log. That'll be fine. So phone call log, notice that over here, it says phone call log. So the title will allow you to change the default name of your table. Perfect. So the only thing we have left to do now is we're going to save and then we are going to publish this sitemap. So we click save and publish. And we can save and close. So we have now built a model driven application. We could hit play right now and it will work just fine. But I want to talk about a couple different areas inside of this model driven um, area that where we're going to decide exactly what forms, views and stuff like that to show our end users because it's important that we want to make sure that anything that they're not going to really need or that they don't have access to because it's just going to confuse them. Okay. So what we're going to do is down here at the bottom, now that we have added our tables, notice that I now have an account table and additionally a phone call table. All of these are set to all, meaning that they're going to be able to see all the charts, all the views, all the forms, everything associated with this table. So if we want to specify exactly what forms or what views we want them to see, we're going to select the name. So I'm going to select my phone call forms and notice on the right hand side, they have access to all of these forms, uh, information, phone call, interactive reference panel. So all of these, but if I want to make sure that they only have access to particular ones, I can deselect all and I'm going to select my phone call and my phone call quick create form. Those two forms I want them to have access to. So notice now it tells me that they only have access to those two forms. Additionally, if I want to change what views they have associated, so if I go into the views on the account table, you'll see a long list of views that are available. Once again, this is all pre-created using Dataverse. We didn't have to make any of this. So the only thing I'm really worried about is my active account. So I'm only going to show them active and inactive accounts, just those two views. All right. And now we can click save and publish at the top. Once again, this is in the upper right hand corner, save and publish. And now let's play our application and see what it looks like. All right, so we have our application and based on the views you select, this will determine what's going to be available in this dropdown. Remember that for the account table, here's my account table, here's my phone call log table, I only chose active and inactive views. So when I click this dropdown, the only two views I have available are active and inactive. But look at my phone call log there are more views based on the table itself, my completed phone calls. So you determine exactly what views and what forms you want your end user to see. So notice I could create an account right up here at the top. So I can click on new and create an account. So let's just do a test account. Say just do testing and hit save and close. All right, um, let me do a little bit different name. Let's do uh, Top Squad Games. That's, and we'll click Save and Close. Notice is down here at the bottom, we have Top Squad Games. And uh, because I had a duplicate testing record, that's why it did not, uh, it asked me if I wanted to duplicate or override that record because it was named the same way. So I just chose a different name, Top Squad Games, to show that it's working. Additionally, in the phone call, so one thing to note, so in the account table, we have this button that says new. But when you go to the phone call log, there is not a plus new button at the top. So this is what I want to talk about you're actually going to click this button that says phone call. 
So that is going to launch your new phone call form. And notice we can do the subject, we can put all the information regarding um, our, so let's say new phone call and the call to Top Squad Games. There's where we choose our account and we can put the phone number in here, 904-903-0762. And we could choose uh, what direction the phone, was it incoming or outgoing call? We could put a description in here, made contact about products, whatever we want. And then we can put the duration as well. Notice it goes in 15 minute increments. All right, so we say it was 45 minutes and we can save and close. And you can see that Top Squad Games was now added to our phone call list. So I wanna thank you for joining me. As you can see, Dataverse is super, super awesome. It has a lot of pre-built tables and columns inside of it that we can take advantage of. You now have created a model-driven app in under five minutes if you subtract all the talking that I did. But I wanna thank you for joining me and I'll see you in the next one.